Ever since I discovered my grandfather's rifle at home, I have always wanted to hunt with it. The little problem I had is that the rifle is so old that it didn't have any papers, any documents or anything. This rifle is fabricated, was fabricated in the 1920s. The brand is called Tigre and it's a copy of the classic American Winchester rifle in caliber 44. And after a few years I decided to, what the hell, I'm gonna give it a try, take it to the police station and try to get the rifle legalized. The process is he didn't have any stamps or any tests back then on the gun. It took me roughly around two years, but uh, this year finally I got the news that the rifles were legalized and that I was gonna be able to hunt with the same rifle that my grandfather had. So we just located a female with a youngster and we just checked it with the with the spotting scope and it looks like the youngster is a, a male. So we're gonna leave both uh, relaxed. They are on a great spot, but yeah, it's a, it's a female with the male and even if you take the female, the male will be still independent. They always teach them a lot. So we want that female to keep uh, coaching and teaching the, the little one. Okay, let's keep on moving and try to see if we can locate a few more females. All right. Okay, good. We have located a, a group of six, at least six, there might be more. Most of them, them look like uh, females, but we're gonna try to go around and try to get above them and see if we can get close enough. And then we will decide which is the right one to, to take. But yeah, they look like they are on the right spot, but I'm not sure how close we're gonna get, but let's, let's give it a try, let's move. What attracted me the most about hunting with this gun was to try to get on the shoes of the people back then, a hundred years ago, where they hunted with a very minimum equipment, no camo, not anything. And the, the challenge of hunting with this rifle is way more challenging than it may look. It's not that it doesn't have any sight or scopes. Like the open sights of this gun are super simple. You cannot adjust anything. The trigger is super long. The caliber is really slow. It's like a, it's a 44 long and it's very slow, not very accurate. So it's a huge challenge. You need to get close and that's what really attracted me the most. Son suficientes, ¿no? over and try to relocate the group. So windy.
So pretty, pretty exciting. We got quite close to this group, 60 meters. But the salt was great, solid rest here against this old uh, separate shelter. And I took the shot. I don't know if I hit him, hit her or not, but the salt felt great. But I may have missed, but we're gonna check it out just in case. But pretty, pretty exciting to get so close and, and to have this rifle that is so challenging to shoot and the bullet is so small that who knows, maybe we got her and he didn't react at all. So let's, let's go check the, if there is any blood. It's like a clean mist. We can't see anything. First piece of the season. I do believe that we need to get somehow back into the old traditions and try to get back into what hunting used to be. These days with trophy hunting, I'm, I'm a huge trophy hunter, but I think sometimes uh, people understand it the wrong way. And what they value the most is the actual size of the antlers of the horns of an animal, rather than the fact of trying to target a specific old animals that create a bigger challenge. That's what the part of trophy hunting that I like. And I do see a trend that sometimes um, the trophy is so important that doesn't really matter how you get to get that trophy or what you do to get that trophy. Any kind of resource that you can have, it's justified because the important thing is the trophy. So I think that trying to get back into enjoying the challenge of the stock, enjoying the challenge of getting close to where the animals can really know that you are there. Trying to get more time in the field and enjoy the nature, the weather, the friends. The, I think that's something that we should try to encourage, encourage more and we should try to learn to enjoy and appreciate more. just picked over but the deer were not here anymore and the location was perfect but the problem of days like this is that the wind blows in one direction and they try to protect themselves from the wind and to get close enough you actually need to go with the wind on your back so you need to try to play as much as possible so they don't get the wind and in this case there was no ma not many plays and they must have gotten our wind so Let's go look for another one. So much fun. All right. In order to keep a healthy population on, on the deer, we need to balance the males and females to have a good ratio. And I, we couldn't think of a better opportunity to try this gun and try to make a twist on a hunt that we do every year and that we are very used to and make it more challenging and more fun and more exciting. We are actually not targeting any doe that we see. We are trying to target either female youngsters or old females that haven't got a youngster this year. So it's, we quickly realized that it was gonna be a big challenge, but that was the fun part of it. All is well, my God. Your anxious heart may be so. Oh, it weighs you down deeper than you know. Yeah, it weighs you down deeper than you know. Oh, no, darling, don't be scared.
you want like 20 meters or less. Mission accomplished with this beautiful mature dough and it's just an example that the trophy is not the important thing it's about how you hunt and the challenge of getting close to the animals stalking crawling and all that and that gets my heart pumping and I would have never thought that I was gonna get so excited of shooting a doe with with a gun beautiful beautiful meat that we also get to to take home and that this is what hunting is all about super thankful As the year pass and the more I hunt, I enjoy more and more these type of hunts that are simple, close home. You get to spend a couple of fun days hunting with friends. You get to get some of the most amazing and favorite meat and take it home to enjoy later with my family and friends. You get to camp here in nature. Like there is no need to camp in nature, but why not? Let's to be able to open the tent and wake up in this much snow. It's just amazing and I think most of us, we have it super handy but we don't appreciate it and we don't value it enough. And anyone can do this type of hunts and anyone can enjoy nature, we just need to be creative. We're gonna leave the road deer hanging overnight so it cools down. We have removed all the stomachs and everything so all the 
cool air from tonight gets inside her and at the same time we have set up tents and now we are gonna enjoy a warm dinner under the freezing stars so super romantic I hope you guys enjoyed this video and the whole purpose of this is to try to inspire uh, other hunters out there to make a step backwards and try to instead of getting the latest equipment that every time we get things easier go the harder way and try to make things more challenging and sometimes the bow or archery that I'm a huge fan it might be too complicated I understand that but even for rifle hunters, there is many ways we can remove the scope, we can go with traditional guns, with open sights. There is a lot of different variations that may allow us to reconnect with nature, reconnect with getting close to the animals, the stalks and the excitement of, of the hunt. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like the video, subscribe. Voy al cuscús. Cuscús de poulet o legumes. Très bon.